Good evening, boys. It's Thursday night, and good evening, families that are joining us. Um, tonight's a story about a leprechaun again. Remember the, the last leprechaun we read? And it was about they never lie. Remember the potato patch and the, the roof and the water and all of that? Well, this is about a little leprechaun who was taking good care of himself, and he thought everything was fine, but it got a little mixed up. So let's read about the leprechaun under the bed. And the, the author is Teresa Bateman, and it's illustrated by Paul Mizell. All right. Okay, the leprechaun's name is Brian O'Shea. Now, you know, if you look at his table, look at Brian, and he's making a shoe for a, a big person, a human person, okay? Let's see what happens. Brian O'Shea enjoyed his privacy. A leprechaun can be alone without being lonely, he liked to say. Indeed, he would know, for he made a snug home beneath the ground in an out-of-the-way spot. But time went on. Big, tall human people moved nearer and nearer, until one day a man named Sean MacDonald started building a stone cottage right overhead. Brian tried, Brian tried leprechaun magic to stop Sean. He made Sean see headless ghosts and even a banshee rising from the foundation stones of his new cottage. Brian's a little afraid, huh? But Brian didn't know. But his plan backfired. It's just like my sainted mother always told me, Sean declared in delight. The land of Ireland is full of magic and surprises. All too soon a fine cottage stood over Brian's home, so he built a door under Sean's bed. On moonlit nights, Brian would cobble outside. When it rained, he worked under Sean's bed, deliberately disturbing the man's sleep. Yet, he didn't wish to be discovered, so if Sean moved, Brian would whisper, now don't you be fretting your wee little head. It's only the cat under the bed. After a week of restless nights, Sean decided he had to know why he wasn't sleeping well. He went to bed as usual, but though his eyes were closed, his ears were open. At midnight, the tapping began, and Sean sat bolt upright. Now don't you be fretting your wee little head. It's only the cat under the bed, he heard from below. Ah, of course, the cat, Sean yawned, settling back under the covers. Then his eyes flew open. I don't have a cat, he thought. And even if I did, whoever heard of a talking cat? So what was under the bed? The answer popped into his head. Sean smiled. His mother had always said that a leprechaun in the house was a fine piece of luck. Luck he couldn't afford to lose. The next morning, Sean made stir about for breakfast and placed a bowl of it under the bed for the cat. At lunch, the bowl was empty, so he put in some stew. From that day on, every time he filled his own plate, he added a bit to the bowl under the bed. Remember when we left cookies, boys, for the leprechauns? The next morning, a gold coin gleamed in the middle of the kitchen table. What a blessing it is to have a cat in the house, he remarked aloud before hurrying out to buy good food. They lived well for weeks on that coin, but soon the cupboard was bare again and another gold coin appeared. Consider this alone, Sean said, until times are better. Thank you, cat. But when Sean went to buy his oatmeal and potatoes, there was more than one eyebrow raised in the village. A poor man might have saved one gold coin for hard times, but two? Gossip ran like water through fingers, and as it spread, it grew. Sean MacDonald must have a whole chest of gold coins hidden in his cottage. One many tongues, what many tongues say, be it true or not, many ears hear. Two robbers caught wind of the tale and decided that no one deserved Sean's gossiped gold more than they did. One crisp, dry morning, they hid outside and waited for Sean to leave. Then they slipped into his cottage, tossed the covers, and pried stones out of the fireplace. Look at the mess they're making. That's not very nice. 
Such a clatter made Brian poke his head up from under the bed. He was shocked at what he saw, but what happened next was worse. The cottage door swung open as Sean returned for a forgotten tool. In no more than it takes to tell the robbers to tell, the robbers tied the poor man to a chair. Tell us where you've hidden the gold, they bellowed. Fearing for Sean's safety, Brian banged his hammer against the floor to catch the robber's attention. Hey now, what's that? One of the men asked. Fearing for Brian's safety, Sean spoke quickly. Now don't you be fretting, your wee little head. It's only the cat under the bed. So one was trying to save the other one. They became friends, I guess. Cat, the man replied. Well, the bed's the only place we haven't looked. As Sean worried, Brian grinned. Both robbers stuck their heads under the bed, and there they saw exactly what Brian had told them, a cat. But this was a wild cat, eyes like lightning and claws like knives. The cat smiled at the robbers, then licked its lips as if it found the sight of them tasty. With a shriek, the men tumbled backward, then fled as if the devil himself were at their heels. Brian laughed till tears ran down his cheeks. See little Brian? Sean chuckled as well as he wiggled free of the rope. Then he stretched and bowed in the direction of his pillow. Tis a grand thing indeed having a cat beneath the bed, he declared. I replied from below, and it's a pleasure having a friend above it. And they lived well and happily for the rest of their days. The end. So, I think we can be friends with people we don't even think we can be friends with. And Sean and Brian became, Sean and Brian became good friends. And um, where did that cat come from, boys? Do you think the leprechaun had something to do with it? Have a good night tonight. I love you very much. God bless you and sweet dreams. Good night.